The prelude to our story begins with a drone quickly passing a girl who sits on a dock. It startles her. The one who was controlling it comes out. He is Caleb. She tells him he could have taken her head off with the drone. Then she says he should go check on his girlfriend, Jessica. Supposedly, something is not right with her. Caleb says he gave her something to sleep off her trouble. It's clear that Caleb has a toxic personality. After that, the girl walks to a triangular house. She enters to call out to Jessica. She soon sees her lying on a bed. Jessica is her cousin. As our heroine sits on a chair, she expresses her negative thoughts regarding Caleb. She also starts reading a book. Following this, Jessica sits up to start uttering lines from the book the girl is reading. She realizes what Jessica is doing and closes the book out of discomfort. Jessica's voice starts becoming demonic. Soon enough, the girl yells for her to stop. Seconds later, Jessica collapses off the bed. Frightened, the girl comes to look at her. Jessica starts vomiting before grabbing her cousin by the neck. We observe the terrifying sight of her scalp getting removed. While Caleb is outside urinating in the water, the severely injured girl comes to him. He panics upon witnessing her wound. Shortly after, Jessica comes to take the drone. The demon inside her makes her steer it right into her cousin. It makes her fall into the water. Caleb dives in to save her, yet it's the last dive of his life. His head gets thrown onto the dock for the girl to see. Soon, Jessica emerges from the water, levitating. This is our preparation for what is to come. One day earlier, we see a girl sitting in a restroom that is covered in graffiti. She checks whether she is pregnant. She is Beth. Someone bangs on the door for her, a man who calls her, boss. Inside an apartment, we observe a lady soldering. Her daughter, Bridget, is there to ask if she's seen the shirt that she wants to wear for a demonstration. The mother, Ellie, tells her she's not going to any demonstration. Our view switches to Bridget's brother, Danny. He engages in disc jockeying in his room. Switching again, we see a little girl cutting the head off of a doll. That is certainly an interesting child. She is Cassie, who instantly hides the scissors she used as soon as her mom tells her she better not of them. Afterward, two kids ring on the door for Bridget to answer. The older one asks if she wants to come over, but the girl rejects his invitation before shutting the door. She sees through the peephole that he wants to knock on the door. He doesn't do it, though. Shortly after, someone rings the door again. This time, Ellie opens the door. However, no one is there. The atmosphere suddenly sinks from lively to somewhat sinister as she looks at the empty hallway. Soon enough, Beth surprises her. We quickly learn they are sisters. Ellie informs her that their building is getting destroyed in maybe one month. Following this, the family has dinner. We learn that Beth was in Bangkok. Cassie starts telling a story that when this building used to be a bank, the teller got caught stealing, which resulted in him losing his life. If someone walks around with coins in their pockets, he hears it and scares them to take it away. Beth tells Cassie that ghosts aren't real. She believes in only what she can see. She then gives her niece a bracelet. After that, she takes out an interesting mug that has a small urinal on it. The present is supposed to be for Ellie's husband. Once she says that, everyone becomes quiet. The mother tells her children to go get pizza at that point. Alone together, Beth asks her sister if her husband meant someone else. She tells her he didn't. He just believes in paying for child support from afar. Beth wants to know why she didn't inform her about this before. She would have done something to help her. She called Beth twice, is what Ellie says. It was more than two months ago. Later, Beth listens to the message her sister left her. Somehow she managed to miss it. We can guess she's a busy lady since she traveled to Bangkok. Ellie sits near her to ask what's going on. Beth got into some trouble again and needs Ellie's help. We don't get to hear what the trouble is. Instead, our attention is taken to the washroom where we see items shake. It seems like an earthquake is happening. The kids start returning with their pizza and soda. The earthquake becomes stronger, causing them to panic. They even drop the pizza, a real shame. The ground starts cracking. After the minor disaster, Danny tells Bridget there is a hole that the earthquake created. He looks inside it to observe an old bank vault. Being a brave boy, he climbs down, only to find a box in the abandoned area. Opening it shows him several things. One of them is a photo of three priests. He hears some muffled voices, which adds an extra layer to the unsafe nature of the place he discovered. He places something into his backpack, before looking around using his foam light. Soon, a crucified Christ nearly falls on him. It doesn't stop Danny from searching some more. He searches until he finds something wrapped in a rack. Opening it reveals over a dozen insects that instantly fly out. When they fly away, it reveals a book with a cover that has its own veins. Meanwhile, Beth tries calling Ellie's kids. A man named Gabe comes out, and Ellie asks to use his car to find them. He offers to drive instead. When he goes to get his car keys, another man comes out, smoking a cigarette. He asks Beth who she is. After she tells him, he asks her if she could hear a cat in the ventilation. The earthquake sent her there. As Gabe leaves his flat with his keys, Ellie's children return using the elevator. The man's service is no longer required. Ellie warns them to never use the elevator after an earthquake. She hugs her kids, relieved that the disaster didn't claim them. Later, we learn from the news that it was a 5.5 magnitude earthquake. Danny uncovers the book in his room with Bridget. He asks her if it could be worth something. Small bones on the book's side make it impossible for him to open it. They even cut his hand. His blood drips on the cover, becoming absorbed by it. Supposedly, that's what it takes to loosen the locked bones. Someone's blood must have been spilled. 
The kids don't seem to realize this, which means they're not fearful of looking inside. Danny opens the book to look at the disturbing images it contains. Bridget wants him to shut it, but her brother is fascinated by this discovery. She is forced to close it for him, urging him to put it back where he got it. He tells her that their mom isn't letting anyone out the front door, so he promises to bring it back tomorrow. Then Cassie gets ready to enter the bathtub. She tells Beth she once got stung by a jellyfish at the beach. This makes her somewhat nervous to enter the water. Beth responds by placing her arm inside the bathtub to fake that something dangerous is there. Her hand emerges with an innocent rubber duck. After her joke on her young niece, Beth holds her stomach in pain, probably because she's pregnant. We must recall that she used a test while inside that artistic restroom. The next scene has Danny taking out the other item he took from the bank vault. It's a dusty vinyl, which he places into his player. A very deep voice starts playing, so deep that its words are incomprehensible. This prompts the boy to engage in his disc jockey. He uses his skill to get the vinyl playing at a speed that makes the voice speak normally. The voice belongs to a man who calls himself Father Marcus Littleton. He talks to his clergyman, saying they've been invited there to witness the unveiling of a special artifact. He refers to it as the Book of the Spirits. Its bindings are made of human flesh. Its passages and drawings are inked with blood. Some clergymen are heard on the track, shouting about their disapproval of the book. Marcus goes on to say that three of them have been rejected by the church. They are likely the three Danny saw in that photo earlier. They have been working to translate the book's contents. Its pages contain ancient rituals and incantations. At that moment, Father Marcus starts reading one of the passages. As he begins, Danny wants to stop the recording, yet something prevents him. The stop button doesn't work. We learn that once it starts playing, it will play until it decides to stop. No one can interfere. The reciting causes the book's pages to start flipping. Something also starts moving at a fast pace toward their building. Ellie exits the elevator at the bottom level, being the unlucky one to have this force enter her. It pushes her back inside, to hold her to its roof while the elevator quickly ascends. It stops only because there is nowhere else to go. Otherwise, it would have probably kept going. Since it slams into the roof, Ellie gets knocked unconscious. After some time, she wakes up and calls for help. She attempts to open the door, though that is to no avail. Certain noises bother her, bringing the lady to her knees as she screams for them to go away. A thick wire descends as a possible response, tying itself around her neck to pull her upward. Choking, she tries to escape, only to get wrapped up by more wires. The family then experience a blackout. Following this, Ellie returns home. Without even greeting her family, she goes to turn on the fire on the stove to high power. She places a pan over it and begins tossing eggs inside chaotically. She doesn't bother to remove the shells. When her family comes to her, she starts talking very oddly about a dream she had. They were all in a forest. All Ellie could think about was how much she wanted to cut them open. She wanted to enter their bodies so they could be a happy family. Of course, this frightens them. Dropping the pan on the floor, Ellie says something is inside her. This is Ellie talking, not the force that entered. However, it controls her again by making Ellie attack her family on all fours. Something looks like it wants to exit her back. The poor lady vomits a white substance that puts her family in a state of disbelief. Before she falls, she tells her sister to not let whatever is inside her take her children. After that, Danny and Beth start dragging Ellie somewhere. They want to use the stairs, yet the earthquake destroyed them. Then we witness Beth explaining the situation to Gabe. He closes Ellie's eyes while she lies in bed. Scarily, they reopen shortly thereafter. This prompts him to do it again. The other man is with them too. Gabe asks if he could give a prayer to which Beth informs him that Ellie wasn't religious. Regardless of that, he still wants to say a few words. He also asks for them to join him. He says the prayer while holding their hands. Afterward, he plans with the older man to escape the building. In the meantime, Bridget comforts Cassie. She tells her younger sister that their dad will return. Soon, Beth is alone with Ellie. Even though she doesn't expect Ellie to hear her, she says she does not know what to do. Ellie is always the one with the answers, she says. She simply cannot believe this has happened. Shortly after, Ellie's voice starts talking on Beth's phone. She urges Beth to help her, because she's burning alive. The phone cracks, causing the frightened lady to drop it. She slowly turns around, expecting to see something, and sees Ellie's eyes open. She quickly sits up, and her kids come in to see it. Beth informs them that their mother is burning up. Therefore, they place her in the bathtub, where Ellie struggles. It doesn't take long for her to fly out, to attach herself to the walls. She screams so loudly that everyone covers their ears. The mirror shatters too, before Ellie falls into the water. She emerges to give the family a wicked smile, telling Danny that his mother is with maggots now. The possessed lady then crawls out to attack them. She holds a mirror shard, with which she starts attacking Beth. She manages to put it through her hand. When Beth gets away, she tells Bridget to get away from her. Ellie asks her older daughter what's happening to her. Of course, this is a fake question. She says she is now free from all of them, who she calls parasites. Ellie follows those words by jumping onto Bridget to try applying her soldering device on her. Thankfully, Danny is there to slam his mom away with a chair. Subsequently, Gabe enters. Noticing him, Ellie jumps on the man to bite his eye out. She spits it out of her mouth into a boy's mouth in the hallway. He is the one who came by earlier. Beth cannot help them, so she resorts to closing the front door to protect her family. They barricade it for extra security. 
Beth cautiously looks through the peephole to observe the chaos in the hallway. Ellie chases after the young boy. He gets thrown against the wall, possibly to his demise. Afterward, Gabe stands near the peephole, begging to be let inside. But Ellie takes his life. What was Beth to do? She cannot risk opening the door again. It looks like a saving moment arrives. When the older man blows Ellie away with his shotgun. However, this victory is short-lived. Ellie manages to drag him toward herself. We do not see what she does to him. Once she has taken care of everyone in the hallway, Ellie comes to look into the peephole to disturb Beth. It makes her run to a window, opening it to yell for help. Yet the ongoing rain makes her inaudible to the person who walks beneath. Then Bridget tells her brother that mom looks like one of the pictures from the book he stole. Danny doesn't want to believe it. Bridget screams that it's his fault. They get into a minor fight, one which Beth has to break up. At that point, Danny tells his aunt he has to show her something. He brings her to the evil book. Beth flips through its pages, not knowing what to make of its vile material. Meanwhile, Cassie hears her mother singing a lullaby behind the door, making the girl walk toward it. Switching between the family members, we see Bridget inspecting a wound her possessed mom inflicted on her. Back in Danny's room, the boy shows Beth the vinyl that Father Marcus spoke on. He realizes all this madness started to take place upon his hearing it. Back to Bridget, she sees her wound proliferate. The book's pages start turning on their own. It seems to cause Bridget's face to emit a black substance. Panicking is all she can do. Returning to Cassie, the young girl looks through the peephole of her singing mom. Ellie gets up, because she knows Cassie is watching her. She lies to the girl about why all this trouble happened. She says it was her being upset about Cassie's father not being there, though he is there now. At that moment, Ellie fakes talking to someone. Bridget tries to deal with her infection by using water. It doesn't seem to help, because more of it leaves her mouth. This time, it comes out with small insects. Ellie wants Cassie to open the door for her. She looks severely creepy, asking the girl to do it. Her ghastly appearance would not fool anyone of considerable age, but Cassie is too young to understand. What she sees is her troubled mother, asking for her help. Therefore, she unlocks the door. Ellie's hand instantly comes out to grab her. Fortunately, Beth rushes in with Danny to save her before anything terrible can come of it. Ellie throws a heavy insult at Beth, while demanding that she opens the door. The insult gets to Beth, almost making her cry. Later, they all hear a loud noise somewhere in the apartment. Beth walks into the kitchen to witness a possessed Bridget sitting on the counter. As if one weren't enough, two possessed family members is truly horrific. Bridget turns around, chewing on a glass. She tells Beth she has to destroy the bugs inside her stomach. She then starts advancing toward Beth, who kicks the girl back. By accident, she throws a grater at Bridget, which the girl uses on Beth's leg. Retaliating, Beth knocks her down with a pot. It doesn't knock her out, though. She quickly gets up to chase Beth. Entering Cassie's room seems to be a mistake for Bridget, because Cassie greets her with a sharp stick through her head. Instead of falling instantly, Bridget slowly removes the stick from herself. It takes a few seconds for her to fall. Cassie cries, asking her aunt if the same thing will happen to them. Once Beth assures her that she won't let that happen, Cassie gives her an interesting response. That Beth knows how to lie to kids. The next scene has Bridget lying in bed, tied up in a cover. Danny did it for safety reasons. At this point, Beth wants to listen to the recording Danny listened to. The boy reminds her they have no power. Beth, however, can fix that problem. The next thing we see is her soldering. She does it to acquire a custom power, so she starts listening to the vinyl. Father Marcus informs her that the demon cannot be destroyed. He further says how the clergyman tried to stop it, but just got plagued by the demon. Then we see the cat in the ventilation that the man was talking about. Ellie hears it, making her smile. As Marcus keeps talking, Bridget jerks around in bed. It doesn't take long for Danny to see the covered Bridget behind Cassie. She flies at the girl, yet Danny saves her. He leaves a knife inside Bridget, which prompts her to forcefully fly at him into the kitchen. She uses that knife to stab the boy who started all of this in the arm. While Beth continues to hear the doomed words on the vinyl, Ellie crawls out of the ventilation in the background. Switching back to the battle, Bridget vomits blood on Danny. She follows this action by stabbing the knife into his chest. Danny gets his chance to fight back by locating a spray that he uses to spray an activated flame on the stove. The fire sets Bridget ablaze. Beth ends up hearing the dreadful words that nothing can stop the demonic force. Marcus's advice is to run. After hearing this, she sees Ellie behind her, in the window's reflection. She manages to stab her with a screwdriver. As a result, the lady gets thrown out of the room. She sees the severely wounded Danny nearby. He apologizes to Cassie before he loses his life. Afterward, Ellie grabs Beth and says she will swallow her soul. Inspecting her stomach, she updates her statement to two souls because of Beth's pregnancy. The demon within Ellie tells her that Ellie waits for her in hell, along with her baby. While hiding, Cassie provides her aunt with a chance to save herself by sliding a pair of scissors her way. Beth quickly uses them to impale the demon. Beth uses this moment to escape. Now she and her youngest niece are the only survivors in this horrifically chaotic time. Beth assures Cassie that she will get them out of there. Following this, Beth opens the front door carefully, allowing her to observe all the lifeless bodies in the hallway. Along with Cassie, she heads for the fire escape. Once there, she attempts to use a hammer to open it. Their bad luck, though, does not allow it to work. 
A second option shows itself, in the form of a shotgun in the older man's hand. Beth collects it, to fire at the lock on the fire escape. She's about to do it, yet Ellie attacks her. Those scissors didn't buy her that much time. She resorts to blowing away Ellie's leg, at a disadvantage now. The demon tells Cassie that her aunt is trying to take her mother away. She tries talking emotionally to the young girl, because it worked before. But Cassie is smarter now, she knows Ellie isn't her mom anymore. Beth is about to destroy the demon's host, only to have her leg grabbed by the older man. Due to this, Beth ends up shooting Ellie's arm off. The man is now possessed too, rudely telling Beth she has his gun. As she beats him with his shotgun, Ellie's two destroyed children start walking in the hallway. They laugh demonically. Ellie wants Beth to know that everyone there will meet their demise by dawn. To drive the point deeper into her mind, all the lifeless people in the hallway awaken into a possessed form, chanting what Ellie just told our heroine. The elevator doors then shut, and the buttons start bleeding. With this comes the filling of the floor with blood. Wanting to escape from the roof, Beth encounters the possessed people reaching for her. Since the blood accumulates to neck level, all the weight exceeds the maximum capacity the elevator can hold, so down it goes. At the bottom level, the doors break open, gushing out dozens of gallons of blood. Amidst the red are our two survivors. They escape into the parking garage, while Beth still holds her shotgun. There is hope inside their car as they enter it. Perhaps it will take them to safety. Yet misfortune rears its ugly head, because the wheel gets stuck in a hole. They're not allowed to escape. Not until they deal with this situation. Beth looks back, to see a grotesque monster come at them. We don't see in detail what it is, though it appears to be a haphazard collection of several people. The duo hide behind the side of the car before it approaches the driver's seat. They have to hide in fear, hoping the monster does not find them. Soon, Beth sees the gate she opened earlier begin to shut. It prompts her to head that way with Cassie. While she makes it to the other side, a hand grabs Cassie, to pull her away. Beth certainly cannot escape without her single remaining beloved niece. Therefore, she frantically tries lifting the gate. Of course, her efforts prove to be useless. The monster places the young girl in a truck, where it goes after her. It collects a chainsaw. In the meantime, Beth breaks through another area, coming to save Cassie. She fires her shotgun at the demon, allowing Cassie to jump out. In response, the monster throws the chainsaw in Beth's direction. It causes her to fall and drop her shotgun. We now plainly see the monster coming at her. It is a horrific combination of Ellie and her two children. The monster couldn't have been anything worse than that. What's worse than the image of your own family coming at you with evil intention? While standing atop a truck with a shredder, the monster collects Beth to start pulling her in that dangerous direction. Cassie comes to her rescue, pulling the lever to deactivate the shredder. This makes the demon begin climbing down the truck. At that crucial moment, Beth yells for Cassie to turn the shredder back on. After she does, Beth runs to the monster with the chainsaw, applying it in retribution. She pushes the demon into the shredder and the machine starts raining blood. The only part that remains is Ellie. She pleads to be helped, but her plea is met with another application of the chainsaw. Now her head is all that's left. She gives our heroine one final insult. That she will fail as a mother, before the mother-to-be kicks the demonic head into the shredder to finish the fight. After that, Beth comes to hug Cassie. She collects the chainsaw, and walks away with her niece in victory. Later, we see a lady walking in the hallway to use the elevator. Since it doesn't work, she uses the stairs. We soon learn that it's Jessica, the girl from the start of our story. She talks to her cousin on a video call about visiting Caleb's dad's cabin by the lake. We should recall that the main events of the story took place exactly one day before the events by the lake. Her cousin says she wants to take a rain check for the trip. However, Jessica insists on picking her up. Then she gets out of her car, because she sees something. It is all the blood from Beth's victorious battle. Jessica becomes terrified upon witnessing it. Something soon races toward her with speed from different sides, entering her. What awaits her in a short time, we already know. If only her poor cousin had taken that rain check.